Hello, everyone. My name is Lucas Worsmeyer. I'm an electrophysiologist from St. Antonius Hospital in Nieuwe Heijn in the Netherlands and a professor of electrophysiology at Amsterdam University Medical Centers. And I'm here in Berlin at the ERA meeting 2024. And uh, we've just ended the late breaker session. And in this late breaker session featured Press Sanders with a fantastic and interesting new technology for pulsed field ablation. This time a balloon based uh, technology with a, with a tool uh, that is that is novel, I think. And uh, first of all, Prash, congratulations with your late breaker. Thank you, Lucas. Um, obviously, we're all excited and interested to hear more about what this new technology brings. So could you give us a short overview of what you've discovered? Brilliant. So what we presented today was a first-in-man experience using a balloon-in-basket technology for pulse field ablation. Now, one of the uh, things we're faced with is we're learning more that proximity to surface is really important for PFA lesions. We're also learning that we've got new complications such as hemolysis. And we're trying to find ways to limit that while improving efficacy of the ablation strategy. And so this is a unique offering uh, where it's an over-the-wire system. You deploy the basket, but there's a balloon that pushes the electrodes out to surface, so you're more likely to get near the surface. It also limits blood flow past the catheter during PFA delivery and so potentially may reduce our risk of hemolysis associated with it. It's a steerable catheter together with a steerable sheath and so you have a lot of manoeuvrability to undertake quite rapid uh, procedures. Now this is really our first time experience and all of the studies were done in Australia uh, but as we recruit and go to the rest of the world we're seeing the procedure get faster. Uh, and we're getting more confidence with the system. So I think this is a real player in, in the pulse field technology uh, that we have available to us. Yeah, I thought that also looking at the system was very exciting. How was your first pass isolation of pulmonary veins? Because this is primarily a pulmonary vein isolation tool, right? So, totally. So uh, yes, it is primarily a, a pulmonary vein isolation tool, but it can be used outside. Okay, now we can go into that a little bit. We, the protocol required a minimum of two and up to a maximum of eight applications for the pulmonary veins. And using this, there was really only one pulmonary vein that we did not isolate, and that's really because the investigator had, had used up the entire eight applications and hadn't got to one section of it. So as per protocol, we had to not uh, apply any more energy to the app. But everyone else, first pass, isolation. Great. And you mentioned other targets that you can ablate? With? So what we, what we have found is so we've had a number of uh, venous anatomies, multiple veins, common ostea, uh, and also we had a case of a, a, a roof vein. And so as we target this, we, you know, by moving the, leaving the wire in the pulmonary vein, but using the agilis to move the catheter out, you are able to target much of the posterior wall without a problem. And so in the roof vein case, we, that's how we isolated. We isolated it by antral ablation. And the idea on early recurrences, because obviously this is three-month data. Yeah. Uh, and we don't know anything about freedom of atrial fibrillation, but any glimpse into the, that future already? Yeah. So I guess uh, the acute result is based on a 20-minute waiting period, and we did not see recovery during that 20-minute waiting period. We've had two cases that have been remapped. Now, one case, it was only a typical flutter, and therefore we didn't cannulate the left atrium. The person had a CTI ablation. The second case uh, actually had recurrent atrial fibrillation, and when we mapped the left atrium, there was persistent isolation of the pulmonary veins. And very interestingly, when we do the voltage map, the ablation line is at the same spot where we'd undertaken out of the index procedure, suggesting that with this technology, you don't have regression or an area of reversible electroporation that you, you may get with other systems. So we don't know, but this is the only uh, experience that we have with remapping uh, in this study. Sounds fantastic, and I think it's fantastic that we now have a balloon-based technology. So can we find your study already printed? It's in final stages of review, and hopefully we will have it out in the next week or so. That's good to hear. Thank you, Prash, Thank and you. congratulations again. Thank you very much, Lucas.